Over the last year, I've made a bunch of upgrades to my equipment and my overall YouTube setup. And since a number of you guys throughout the course of this last year have asked me at different times what kind of gear I'm using from my cameras, my microphone, to my editing software, I wanted to put together a quick overview of the equipment that I have. In this one, I won't be covering how I make videos so much as the equipment itself. I plan to do a separate video detailing that at some point in the future. Before we get started, I do want to share a couple of quick thoughts that I have about gear because I think Especially for people who haven't made videos before, it's really, really easy to get overly focused on the gear itself rather than actually just getting the shot and making something and sharing it. So first and foremost, my philosophy is that gear are tools and tools don't guarantee success. My channel is pretty small and it grows pretty slowly. I've definitely made some investments in technology over the past year and even before that. And if you look back at some of my old videos, it's definitely clear that it's made a difference in terms of the quality. However, and I kid you not, I started making videos on YouTube simply using my third generation iPad and my iPhone 4S. I was editing everything in the iPad version of iMovie, but getting started really is key. So don't get too mired in the details of, oh, I don't have this camera or I don't have this microphone or I don't have this editing software, so I might as well not do anything. The best thing you can do is just to get started and start sharing. And the second point that I wanna make comes from a 1996 essay that Bill Gates of all people wrote. And in it he said, content is king. And we can see that all around us. Quality aside, people are gonna to gravitate toward things that are of value to them. And whether that value comes in the form of perhaps entertainment or training or a multitude of other possibilities, focus most of all on what's gonna be inside of your videos. Don't get me wrong, how you make them is very, very important and it can make or break a video. But I look back at some of the videos on my own channel and I did some of my most successful videos before I had a nice camera or a microphone or even a laptop. Okay, here's what I used to make my videos. The camera that I'm shooting this on right now is the Canon 70D. It's renowned for its autofocus, which is really, really top notch. It was recently succeeded by the Canon 80D, which has a slightly bigger image sensor and a few other bells and whistles here and there, but reviews have been kind of mixed on it, admittedly. The Canon 80D is by no means a bad product, but if you're looking to get into the world of DSLRs and you're looking for a really high quality option that you won't have to worry about too much, my recommendation would go to the Canon 70D so you can save yourself a little bit of money. And obviously there are many more less expensive DSLR models out there, both from Canon and Nikon and some other manufacturers. I was fortunate enough to get my Canon 70D from a good friend of mine as detailed in this video here. Right now my camera is sitting on a pretty simple Amazon Basics tripod. It's by no means a high-end tripod. I wanna say I paid maybe 25, 30, 35 dollars, somewhere in that range for it. But it gets the job done and I wanted to have something that was pretty easy to use and set up in a small room like this. However, more of the time, I actually am using this here. This is a Joby Gorillapod. I got this also from Amazon. It is a little expensive. The tripod itself is about 50 bucks and then this mount up here is another 40 or 50 dollars so this thing is a little pricey but it's extremely useful this top part can swivel around just about any which way you can have your camera go completely sideways like this it's again very lightweight and obviously very portable most of the time i have this set up on my desk when i'm filming videos here in this room though it sits nicely on the desk and it's much more compact than a full-size tripod I do have a smaller version of that as well that I use for my iPhone. This one's all plastic, whereas the larger sized one has a lot of metal on it. So I do worry sometimes that this part in particular could potentially break. <laughs> but thankfully, no problems have arisen so far and this one's not nearly as expensive as that one is. This is what it sounds like about four feet away from the camera using the camera's built-in microphone. As I'm sure you can tell, as I get a little bit closer, it sounds a little bit better, but when I back up, it gets a little more echoey. You can hear the room noise significantly more. So now I'll show you what it sounds like when I use the external microphone. And we're back to normal. This is what it sounds like at that four foot or so distance from the camera using the Shure microphone on top of the camera. It does a nice job of picking up what's in front of it and tries to cancel out some of the sounds on the side. So as I move over here, it's probably gonna sound a little bit different and over here, you might hear some of the audio quality change as I move around the room. Perhaps one of my proudest money-saving, budget-friendly tips to give you guys as far as equipment goes is to use whatever you can that you already have. And my favorite example as far as my own channel goes so far, anytime I've had to do voiceover for a video, namely for like my 2016 Game Room Tour video, I've used a USB rock band microphone. <laughs> Not kidding. This thing is super easy to use. You literally just plug it in. And as long as you have a video or audio editing program available, you can record using this. You do have to make some concessions from time to time as far as where to position it and 
it would definitely be better suited to use a pop filter. I've had to get a little creative at times by putting cloth, like clothing and things around this so it kind of muffles the sound and blocks out wind and things like that. But it's worked really well for me so far and I've just got it on a little tabletop mic stand here. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to use this forever as I do plan to upgrade to a much nicer microphone sometime in the next year or so. But this really just, again, lends itself to the mantra of just get started and do the best you can with what you have. Currently I'm standing again about four feet away from the camera and I'm using that 18 to 135 millimeter lens and it's currently at the 18 millimeter range so it's relatively wide at the moment. It can always be wider as I'll show you in the next shot but here when I zoom in to 135, you can see that it really gets in there and picks up a lot of detail. And now I'll show you what it looks like with the 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens. Okay, and here's the 10 to 18 millimeter wide angle lens. This one's especially good for landscape photography and videography. I'm again at that same four foot distance. And as you can see, you can see much more of the room at the moment. This is the kind of lens that I like to use for conventions and going outside and doing other interior sorts of shots. Most of the time when I do episodes of my series The Collecting Saga and really the majority of my other videos, I'm using that other 18 to 135 millimeter lens. You'll also see a lot of other YouTube vloggers and personalities adopting this type of lens to capture everything that's around them. And we're back to the 18 to 135 millimeter. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I literally started this channel just by shooting on my third generation iPad and my iPhone 4S. I've since upgraded to an iPhone 6S. I think I got this back in September of last year and it's been a really good phone. This was the first iPhone that offered 4K video and I do use that functionality on these videos sometimes. So typically, again, when I'm out and about and it's not easy for me to get to my Canon camera. And from what I've found, the image quality in the 4K setting on this phone gets somewhat close to the image quality you can find on that camera, on the Canon that I'm shooting on now. It's still not as detailed though, because that Canon's got a 20.2 megapixel sensor on it, and having interchangeable lenses can afford you all kinds of different quality levels, from some pretty cheap options to obviously some very much more <laughs> expensive and professional grade lens options. But it's really valuable to be able to combine the high quality 1080p image from that camera with the 4K image from my phone. The last point I wanna talk about with my equipment is kind of my biggest point of shame, and that's with respect to lighting. As I mentioned, I live in kind of a cramped apartment. It's a second story apartment. And although there's a decent amount of windows, they're not super big and they actually face mostly north and south, so I never get a lot of great direct sunlight that I can use. Right now, I've got a large window that's open in front of my desk that's helping, but otherwise, I literally have been just using this lamp here. It's just a reading lamp from Target, but kind of like how I described with my microphone earlier, I do plan on upgrading my lights sometime within the next year. I'd like to maybe get one of those ring lights that's pretty compact and it generates a lot of nice bright white light that you can use. The most expensive investment by far that I've made both for YouTube and then even because I needed it for my personal life was a new laptop. As I mentioned, I was editing everything on an iPad. I had an old desktop computer that was really, really chugging along and it needed to be retired. And I thought about getting another desktop, but living in a cramped apartment with my girlfriend and our dog and the fact that I love to travel, I decided to go the laptop route. I knew that I needed something that would be strong enough to handle the type of video editing that I wanted to do at the frequency that I wanted to do it. So I shopped around a little bit and ultimately decided on this MSI 17.4 inch notebook, I think it is. It is a gaming laptop. I don't really do much gaming on it. I've played a few games here and there and it's handled all of them fine. But over the last year or so of using it, it has been great for me. It handles the Adobe Creative Cloud programs fine. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, a Core i7 processor, and a nice 17 inch display. It's intended as a desktop replacement, which that's usually how it serves me, but it's also portable, obviously. It is a little heavy. That's kind of a downside of it. So you definitely notice it when it's in your backpack, but it's definitely not flimsy and it's been very reliable so far. As I mentioned on this laptop, I use the Adobe Creative Cloud. That's how I do all of my editing. So I use Adobe Premiere Pro for my videos and I use Adobe Photoshop for making thumbnails and things like that. I know thumbnail making is kind of a big pain point for a lot of people and it certainly can be for me too. If you don't have Photoshop, you really don't need it to make thumbnails. It definitely can help, but there are free tools out there. One of my favorites that I used to use before I had my laptop was a website called Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R.com. It has many of the features of Photoshop and it's browser-based, so you don't even actually have to install anything on your computer. You can actually go to pixlr.com, set up a template, and make your thumbnail right there. There you have it. That's the gear that I use to make my YouTube videos, and I hope this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments what gear you currently are using and whether you plan to upgrade certain elements of that as time goes on. 
I hope you guys found this video valuable, and if this was your first Crosschop video and you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out at Crosschop today, and as always, play heavy.